Okay, so I've been looking a little bit more about how to manage uh, highway alignment design using the Sketcher and FreeCAD for the uh, transportation workbench. And this isn't anything that I haven't been dealing with before, uh, but I'm kind of uh, zeroing in on what I think is probably an ideal workflow for getting this done in the Sketcher. Uh, to begin with, when we do uh, when we do a highway alignment design, the approach to it is really like modeling anything in that you, the first thing you do is you rough in the basic overall shape or the largest features of that shape and then you go back and you work in the details and, and all of the finer points after the fact once you've got that once you've got that large scale rough uh, the large scale rough features figured out so in highway design then in terms of laying out a horizontal alignment the way that we can go about using that approach is to first trace out the alignment just using straight lines, what I like to call back tangents. And these represent the entire alignment, but only in the straight segments only. And so if we adjust those, and here I'm using an existing uh, picture of a row just to simplify the, just to, just to make this easier to understand. Um, if we adjust those and get them right where we want them. Let's see here, push that just a hair that way. There we go. And then maybe move this over a bit. Okay. And then we lock that design, uh, we lock that uh, alignment down. We now have our total alignment roughed in using just simple straight lines. Now, of course, if I want to add if I want to make this alignment more accurate or more precise I need to go in and I need to add curves and I add curves wherever there are discontinuities like these angles here in the alignment so in order to add curves using the sketcher the simplest curve shape that we use are, is the uh, is a single center curve which is just a simple circular arc and a single center curve is constrained by two back tangents which I've just drawn and these two tangents then are <clears throat> obviously tangentially constrained to the endpoints of the curve and another mathematical property is that these two tangents are of equal length now I could apply an equal length constraint to that but it would in fact be redundant um, because by definition given that they are tangentially constrained to the endpoints of a simple circular arc they must in fact be equal in length. So that gives me a basic sim uh, circular arc which gives me all the, the, the four key control points. The point of intersection where the tangents intersect, the point of curvature, curvature uh, where the curve begins, the point of tangency where the curve ends, and the radius point. And these are the four control points that are commonly used in uh, curve design in highway alignments. So the next step then is to lock our curve to our back tangents. And I can do that just using a series of simple coincident constraints. And now once I've got my curve locked to my back tangents, I'm free to play with it and adjust it to get it size just right to make sure it matches or lines up the way I want it to. <clears throat> now on this other curve I've got something that's just a little bit more complex. I could fit it probably with a simple curve but this is really a case that needs a compound or two center curve. So I can do that much like I did before because a two center curve is really two simple curves uh, in series. So in order to create that um, I think I gotta do I just draw out my tangents like so and then I constrain them to the back tangents like so constrain the two outermost tangents now I've got two sets of tangents, two, uh, two pairs of tangents. These two represent the tangents for the first curve. These two represent the tangents for the second curve. And because my curves are tangent to each other, 
I have to make sure that these tangents are also tangent or parallel to each other. Now I can go in and I can add my arcs. Let's see here, so that would probably match right there. And we'll pick those two and make them tangent. Make those tangent and then add our second arc. It's going to fall maybe somewhere out here. those tangent and make those points tangent. Alright, so now I've created my compound arc and I can go in and adjust it using any of the geometry of course that I've created and it's locked to my back tangents so I don't need to worry about it getting misaligned and I can just sit here and fiddle around with it until I'm satisfied with the results. Of course it's not perfect. But you can see how using a visual method like this, especially with the way the sketcher works, provides a rather direct and intuitive way of doing, of quickly laying out a horizontal alignment for a highway design project. Now in most cases your highway design projects are going to be dependent upon actual numbers, you know, spe spe specifying specific lengths for the back tangents, for the curve radii, and so on. And those are constraints that are easily applied and, and done with this as well. Uh, but the more complex use case is doing this visual by hand, so to speak, uh, alignment design. So having this as a as a uh, an available workflow as a default I think makes it really valuable. And of course if I want to go back and um, make changes to my alignment after I've added my curves I can delete my blocking constraints on a couple of my back tangents and sit there and adjust them accordingly. Um, but in the course of exploring this uh, and especially as we've explored using Bezier curves and B splines to lay out these back tangents, one of the things that's uh, come about as, as a, a critical workflow is using um, more than one sketch to represent the total design. In other words, because a highway design consists of uh, your uh, coarse grained adjustments with your back tangents and your fine grained adjustments using your actual curves, you can actually split the two into separate sketches as I've done here. So here in this top sketch I have my back tangents and then in the lower level sketch I have my curves which of course reference the geometry in the upper level sketch. And this permits me to go in and simply pick a point, oops, let's turn this on, but this permits me to go in and simply adjust a back tangent in the upper level sketch and have the curves in the lower level sketch track with it. Now the only problem with this is that things break more easily when you start using this process. Like that for example. If adjustments happen that are too large in nature or too extreme, uh, something happens that, that breaks the constraints or, or uh, confuses the solver or something like that and I'm not exactly sure what causes it uh, but I get the impression that maybe it has to do with making too big of a change at one point uh, or maybe uh, not more frequently updating the uh, second level sketch based on changes in the top level sketch so uh, it, perhaps the solution to this would be as I drag points in this sketch that it would force, oh there you go that snapped but it would it would force um, the sketcher to automatically recompute in the second sketch as I'm actively dragging, not after I've quit dragging. So dealing with that, I think, is going to be kind of uh, critical to making this workflow robust and sustainable. But I really feel like that this is is really the key workflow to make horizontal alignments work in FreeCAD.